production of chemical hurting the ozone layer. Banned chemicals are being used somewhere in the world again, and the ozone is being damaged as a result. New research published in the journal Nature details findings that posits somewhere in East Asia is producing the banned ozone-depleting chemical CFC-11. According to the BBC, CFC-11 was used in the 1930s as a refrigerant. It could also be found in solvents and aerosols. But its use came at a devastating cost. Along with now other banned chemicals, its use left a massive hole in the ozone layer. Scientists say the continued production of the chemical may slow the recovery of the ozone. Researchers considered several factors to explain the continued presence of CFC-11, but concluded that unreported new production is behind it. Speaking to Time, University of Maryland expert Ross Salowich said this rogue production of CFC-11 could hurt the ozone recovery. And that's bad because it leaves the ozone and thereby all 7 billion Earthlings exposed to new threats. That's why CFC-11 and ozone-depleting chemicals like it were outlawed under an agreement named the Montreal Protocol. Here's more on the ozone and the planet we call home. Is the ozone layer recovering? NASA announced on Thursday that the hole in the Earth's ozone is the smallest it's been for the last 29 years, though not because toxic emissions have gone down. The ozone hole that formed over Antarctica this year measured 7.6 million square miles at its maximum peak and is as small as it's been since 1988. Ozone molecules shield the Earth from the sun's UV radiation, but are being depleted by man-made chemicals like bromine and chlorine that are released into the atmosphere. The hole in the ozone has been growing larger over the years, measuring more than 11 million square miles at its highest. Ozone deteriorates more quickly in colder temperatures and in the presence of polar stratospheric clouds that encourage ozone-eating chemical reactions. This year's weak depletion is largely due to stormy conditions in the upper atmosphere, which warmed temperatures and kept toxic chemicals from destroying the ozone. While the small ozone hole resulted from mostly natural causes, steady improvements such as the banning of ozone-eating chemicals in a 1987 international treaty may have also contributed. The ozone should be a no-go zone for these chemicals. The ozone is the only thing separating us from skin cancer and a fiery apocalypse, but it's under attack again. Scientists looking at data from Taiwan and Malaysia found that the atmosphere is stacked with the chemical dichloromethane. This chemical is said to deplete the ozone layer over Earth. The ozone helps to protect Earth from the sun's cancerous ultraviolet rays. Scientists also discovered large traces of the chemical dichloroethane, another ozone-depleting chemical. An international treaty phased out ozone-killing chemicals in 1987, but based on this, it'll probably need some amending and fast. Here's why the Gulf of Mexico dead zone is extra large this year. Low oxygen areas appear yearly off the coast of Louisiana, but 2017's dead zone is reportedly the largest ever documented since records began in 1985. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration announced that this year's dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico measures 8,776 square miles, which is roughly the size of New Jersey. The 2002 dead zone covered nearly 8,500 square miles, but the past five years have seen the area cover no more than an area less than 6,000 square miles. Dead zones are caused by nitrogen and phosphorus, which are used as crop nutrients by farmers and washed into waterways by rain. Unusually heavy rains in the Midwest are believed to have washed away more nutrients from U.S. farmlands than usual, sending them downstream via the Mississippi River. Nitrogen and phosphorus stimulate massive algal growth in the Gulf that eventually sinks to the bottom and decomposes. This decomposition process uses up the oxygen in the water, which renders the area uninhabitable for marine creatures. Dead zones are usually temporary, dissipating during fall and winter. But the effects of low oxygen or hypoxic zones on certain species can be permanent with studies showing it affects fish reproduction and stunts shrimp growth. Setting a federal limit on the use of crop nutrients may be one possible solution, but could prove challenging since it will need to be implemented in more than 25 states. Millions perish yearly due to pollution. New data on pollution shows the air we breathe can be lethal. A new report from the World Health Organization says that 7 million people die annually from exposure to polluted air. The organization says 9 out of 10 people everywhere are exposed to dangerous pollutants. 
The WHO says that 34 percent of all pollution-related deaths are due to heart disease and 20 percent are from stroke. The rest consist of various lung-related conditions including pneumonia, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and lung cancer. Concerningly, many are linked to air inside the home. Around 3.6 million deaths are connected to exposure from indoor air pollutants such as fumes from cooking fires and stoves. The most vulnerable are children under five where pneumonia is the biggest risk to life, women working in smoky kitchens and people who work outside. The WHO says outdoor air pollution in cities and rural settings is caused by industry and energy supply, transportation, waste management, dust, farming practices and household energy. Regional estimates put pollution fatalities at over 4 million in West Pacific and Southeast Asia. That number is around 1 million in Africa. In the Middle East and the North Africa region, half a million pass away due to pollution. That's around the same for Europe. While in the Americas, 300,000 perish annually due to exposure. The WHO says that many of these deaths, as many as 25 percent of all child mortalities, can be prevented by cleaning up the environment. The hottest place on Earth. The U.S. Northeast may be experiencing record-breaking low temperatures, but in the land down under, Aussies are melting from the sweltering heat. Sydney became the hottest place on Earth on January 7th, with temperatures in the western suburb in Penrith reaching 47.3 degrees Celsius. It was a few degrees shy of breaking the record for hottest day in the area, a 47.8 degree temperature recorded in Richmond in 1939. The hot weather combined with strong winds increased bushfire occurrences, prompting certain areas to issue a total fire ban prohibiting open-air fires, welding, barbecues and throwing lit cigarettes, among others. The heat caused higher than normal ozone levels, prompting a forecast of poor air quality, which could affect those with respiratory problems. Extreme temperatures also affected train track infrastructure and contributed to power outages, which affected roughly 3,000 properties throughout Sydney. The next few days are expected to be cooler compared to Sunday's scorcher, but still relatively hot. Dirty old birds show changes in U.S. air pollution. Researchers analyzed the amount of soot on birds in museums from Rust Belt cities to track air pollution in the U.S. over the last 135 years. A new paper shows the discoloration of birds in museum collections can be used to estimate the amount of black carbon air over time. Researchers sampled over a thousand birds collected over the last 135 years to find out and quantify the effects of soot in the air in Rust Belt cities like Chicago, Detroit and Pittsburgh. To track changes in sootiness, the scientists photographed the birds and measured the light reflected off of them. They found that older birds were dirtier and new birds were cleaner. The team discovered that soot on birds closely tracks the use of coal over time. Researchers also pointed out that even though newer birds are cleaner, it doesn't necessarily mean U.S. air is less polluted. Many of the pollutants released into the atmosphere today aren't as easily tracked as soot.